I've always wondered, as an amateur forager and mycologist, if we could take wild morel samples and clone them, put them on agar plates, derive a liquid culture from that, and inoculate areas that are conducive to morel growth. We're going to try that in this video, and I can't guarantee success or failure, but we'll see what we can do. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a laminar flow hood to create an aseptic environment. You're going to need some petri dishes with agar ready to go, some electrical tape, and a method by which you can flame sterilize your scalpel. With your flow hood on, you're going to clean everything you plan on using with 70% alcohol. And you're going to use 70% alcohol specifically because the 90% doesn't have as high water content and is not good at lysing uh, bacteria and, and killing bacteria as effectively as, as a 70% solution is. So open up your Petri dish. And after that, make sure to take your morel sample and you're going to wipe that down with alcohol as well. Now remember, these mushrooms are from the wild, and as such, they are brimming with contamination, bacteria, mold spores, etc. So you have to make sure to get it clean. Some people deem it appropriate to douse the sample that you're about to remove from the morel in a peroxide bath, even after cleaning it with alcohol. I am not doing that in this instance. However, you could choose to do so if you want. So once you have your morel cleaned and ready to go, you're going to very carefully and very slowly and methodically take a sample from the pulp area of the mushroom, the inside area, after you split the mushroom in two by bisecting it vertically. You're going to look at the, I don't know what the correct term is, maybe the pith, the inside surface of the mushroom. You're going to get in there and you're going to dig in with your scalpel after flame sterilizing it and you're going to remove a sample dip it in the peroxide bath if you so choose to do that, and then you're going to transfer it onto the agar plate, all within the confines of the airstream being provided to you by the laminar flow hood that you're using. And unfortunately, no, this cannot really be done effectively without a laminar flow hood or at least a still air glove box. And here you can see me transferring the sample from the morel into the agar plate. I'm going to tape it up and then after that with any luck in a couple of days you should start to see some mycelial growth what we're going to show next is the process of after you do see that mycelial growth learning to separate the mycelial growth from the inevitable contamination that you're going to get and so we're going to have to do multiple transfers from agar plate to agar plate over time to get a pure unadulterated morel strain And after you seal those up, monitor them for a couple of days, and with any luck, you should be seeing some mycelial growth within three or four days. After that, and after they start to proliferate in, on the agar, you're going to have to notice and look for contamination. And as you can see in this sample, we do in fact have contamination in the outer sections of the diameter of the Petri dish here. And so we're going to have to then do another agar to agar transfer. And we're gonna do that right now. cut out a triangular shape out of the original agar with the contamination and slowly and methodically transfer it over to other uh, agar petri dishes and slowly but surely through process of elimination you should get a clean morel mycelium sample and that's what we're going to do here.
and there you have it. Now, with this technique, you should be able to theoretically, uh, and that all depends on your uh, lab technique and all of that, but you should be able to theoretically clone any type of wild mushroom that you find in, 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 in a forest or wherever. And uh, again, the sky's the limit because you have to remember that your only limitation is whether or not the mushrooms that you do decide to clone are sapotrophic or mycorrhizal. Uh, you can take a oyster mushroom that you find particularly uh, to have particularly good genetics and you can reproduce that in the lab and you can develop your own strain based off of that wild uh, oyster strain. Again, however, the purpose of this video is to take a mycorrhizal species that cannot be effectively cultivated uh, due to the mycorrhizal nature of its growth and develop strains that will help us inoculate uh, the, in my case, Northeast United States with Morel uh, liquid culture. So that's it for this video. We have tons of content coming up. We're going to show you how to make agar in another video. We're going to show you more of our foraging uh, adventures and wild mushrooms. Uh, I found a beautiful flush of oysters the other day that I'm going to show you guys very soon. So make sure you subscribe, like, and comment.